Fusion is the reaction that powers the sun and the stars. It's the joining together of the nuclei, the very centres of atoms, to make larger nuclei and release huge amounts of energy. Scientists are looking to recreate fusion on Earth because it would be an incredible energy source. It would produce no greenhouse gases, no long-lived radioactive waste, and it produces huge amounts of energy for the weight of fuel. So just one kilogram of fusion fuel produces as much energy as 10 million kilograms of fossil fuels. Fusion only happens at stellar temperatures, so you need hundreds of millions of degrees for these particles to come together. That's because the nuclei of atoms are all positively charged, and like charges repel. So in order to get them to fuse, you have to get them moving really fast so that they slam into each other really hard and they can get close enough to fuse. You need to heat the gas up, so you need to make a plasma but we still have huge engineering hurdles to cover before we can actually make a commercial fusion power plant. You need to have um, a way of extracting the energy uh, from the fusion reaction, uh, and you need to have strong materials that can withstand the hostile environment. We're trying to make a star on Earth. You need to have very, very high temperatures, hundreds of millions of degrees, and you need to somehow contain that plasma and you have to keep it away from the walls of whatever you're using to contain it. So we use magnetic fields often in a machine called a tokamak to trap our hot plasma away from the walls of the machine and therefore be able to heat it to stellar temperatures. Scientists have been working on fusion energy since about the late 1940s, early 1950s, so it's quite a long time now. There are fusion machines all around the world. It's a really international research project. There are lots of different countries contributing to ITER, which is a big machine that's being built in the south of France. It's a worldwide collaboration. But countries also have their own labs, their own flagship projects. So there are, there are numerous tokamaks all around the world. Scientists have actually achieved fusion. The JET tokamak in Oxfordshire it made 16 megawatts of fusion power back in 1997. The thing is, no one's got more energy out of the reaction than they put in. So it's going to be really exciting when scientists are able to get past energy break even. In the early days, I think scientists thought that fusion was going to be easier to achieve than it was. Uh, fission had been quite quickly commercialised into a, an energy source and I think people thought that fusion would be uh, fairly straightforward as well but actually it's, it's much more complicated to get the conditions right for fusion. That makes it inherently a lot safer because fission uh, has a chain reaction. You can trigger it and it, it runs off on its own which can be tricky. It, it requires control whereas fusion, if the conditions aren't perfect then everything stops. So that makes it inherently safe, but it also means that it's very, very hard to do.